after getting out of Agar Falernus, Hannibal headed to Geronium. However, he was up against the Magister Equitum, Marcus Minucius Rufus. Without Fabius, what would he do against Hannibal? What were the struggles of Hannibal and Fabius? Was it simply religious duties that Fabius did? What were the differences between the skirmish and the battle itself? What was the aftermath, find out today on Roman history. Hannibal left the baggage to not slow their march out of their attack on the 4,000 Romans. Fabius decided to continue shadowing him despite others' opinions, Minucius, wanted an aggressive move. At first, it seemed Hannibal would head for Rome, but without adequate provisions, it would be counterproductive to besiege it. Instead, he went northeast to Apulia to gather them and establish winter quarters. He used scorched earth tactics on the wealthy aristocrats' villas, except for Fabius. The reasons were a combination of respect for Fabius due to Hellenistic influences and continuing to hurt him politically with the internal dissent. Regardless, according to the Greek historian Plutarch and Roman historian Livy, he dispatched a guard to protect and later sent his son, Quintus, to sell the villa. The Senate was slow to respond, and Fabius used his wealth to exchange 247 Roman prisoners under Hannibal, 250 drachmas per prisoner. The motive was Fabius and Hannibal agreeing to exchange prisoners, during the march, Fabius stayed on the high ground and shadowed him. The Romans arrived at Lorinum for its grain depot but had to return to Rome to carry out religious services. However, it was more likely he had to answer the criticisms from the Roman Senate. When Hannibal arrived in Geronium, according to Livy, he captured and sacked it. The Greek historian Polybius mentioned Hannibal trying to negotiate, but it failed. As a result, he destroyed the town, except for its granaries of plentiful grain supplies, and sent two-thirds of his army to forage and one-third to protect. He needed food and pastures for his pack animals and horses. He was a novice homo, new man the first male in his family to serve in politics, and served as a political dictator in 222 BC. Like Sempronius and Flaminius, he wanted to take aggressive, offensive actions instead of heeding Fabius' defensive tactics. Initially, he stayed on the high ground. After seeing the situation, he set his camp to the plains and attacked Hannibal's foragers with the Roman Velitas and cavalry. As a result, Hannibal moved with two-thirds of his army protecting his foragers and moved 2,960 meters from Geronium to be closer to the Roman camp, specifically at the midway point. He positioned on the high ground and sent 2,000 light troops on the hill at night. By the next day, Minucius Velitas took it and sent the Romans and Samnites against Hannibal's newly established camp. Both sides suffered heavy casualties, 6,000 for the Carthaginians and 5,000 for the Romans. As a result, Hannibal retreated to his original position. Thanks to the help of Hasdrubal and 4,000 cavalry, but resumed foraging parties. It was unknown whether he suffered a lack of provisions or tried to show incompetence due to the Romans being capable of picking them off. The skirmish was to raise Roman morale, and he used their overconfidence for the upcoming battle. The effect of the skirmish had a psychological and political impact. The Romans believed Minucius to be the one to take down Hannibal. The tribune of the plebs, Marcus Matilius, passed the Lex Matilius, promoting Minucius as co-dictator and an equal to Fabius. Simply, it was like two consuls in the same year. Fabius refused to address the assembly due to its immense opposition and went to the Senate. He tried to defend his actions and claimed the successes of his campaign versus the failures of previous Roman commanders and the strengths of the Carthaginian army. However, the senators gave a cold reception and refused to heed his advice. Fabius did not believe in the exaggerated reports and knew Minucius won in the skirmishes. Not a pitched battle. He stayed his course and gave Minucius two choices, either lead the army for a day and switch command between them on alternate days or set a separate camp and divide it into two. Minucius opted for the second option and had half of the army, the second and third legions with half of the allied troops. Fabius had the same amount, including allies, 
but led the first and fourth legions. The night before the battle, Hannibal hid 5,000 infantry and 500 cavalry on the treeless hill but hid in the shrubs and pits. He used the cliffs to conceal 200 to 300 troops each. In the morning, Minutius organized his men, Valida's first, cavalry second, and the legionaries third under his direct command. When the Validas arrived on the hill, they attacked the Carthaginian light troops. Then, the Roman and allied cavalry engaged with the Numidian and Iberian cavalry. Next, the legionaries faced the Carthaginian infantry under Hannibal's leadership. After, he launched his ambush, concealed Libyan troops on the ravines assaulted the Romans on all sides. Fabius realized the situation and sent his troops to save the army, which succeeded but lost more casualties to Numidian cavalry assaults. Minucius humbled and reconciled with Fabius, calling his father and being under his second-in-command. During the winter, the Roman army trained and fought skirmishes with the Carthaginian foragers. The Romans won them, but Hannibal gained enough provisions to last into the spring of 216 BC. Fabius ended his dictatorship in December 217 BC. After that, the command temporarily gave to two suffect or temporary consuls, Nia Servilius Geminus, who captured a large portion of the 70-ship Carthaginian navy patrolling in the sea, and Marcus Atilius Regulus. They were to complete the remainder of the consul's term of one year. In eight months, the epic Battle of Cannae and the events leading to it would begin. The Battle of Geronium was another example of Hannibal's use of geography, psychological warfare, and ambushes to win it. Once again, the Romans lost despite winning the skirmish. Minutius would later serve in the Battle of Cannae, the same went for Geminus and Regulus. Thanks for watching and please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications to see more of my videos.